HFS in 97.5. Hey, it's Rita here broadcasting live from the Firefly Music Festival. And surprise, I have a couple of the guys from Vampire Weekend. Introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Ross Sim. I'm Chris T. All right, great. Well, first, I just want to say congratulations on the success of Modern Vampires of the City. Because, um, you know, it was number one right out of the gate. But the one thing that I want to know, I'm a big fan and I love the first two albums, but this one seems to be quite a departure from the other two. So can you talk a little bit about that? Well, we like to think of each album kind of being a little bit of a departure from the last one. I guess on this album, what kind of was the defining factor was like songwriting. We wanted just to write as good of songs as we could do. And that was what we cared the most about. So it didn't matter if we had like big guitar riff songs or if we didn't. We just wanted songs that we really loved. So maybe that's why it, it sounds a little different. I noticed that you produced the first two, and then you had someone else come in with you on this one. So w what was that like? Well, a lot of the production ideas kind of started in New York with me on my own and um, like working with the band and me and Ezra working together. And then we sort of continued the second phase of making the album in L.A. And Ariel Rekshide, who's been a good friend for a while, he kind of came in and the two of us co-produced all the songs on the album together. So he brought in this kind of, uh, this nice like uh, presence and uh, this sort of help with like pushing across the finish line, which is always hard to do. So it was nice to have that on this record because otherwise it wouldn't have been finished. <laughs> so the first single, Diane Young. I saw the video the other day. Whose idea was that, and how did you get all those cameos to show up in there? Well, I think it was uh, generally the way you know videos are made is that uh, some will get treatments where directors hear the song and come to us with the idea and a visual thing to, you know, that they think works with the music. And I guess that we sort of been putting it off for a while. Eventually, Ezra came up with this idea of sort of this minimalist, dinner scene where we would invite a lot of our friends that we knew and respected from I guess generally the New York music scene that's what you know people that could show up on that <laughs> specific day and then just you know have some things happen and there was a bit of a storyline I think it I think it works hopefully people enjoy sort of spotting who they recognize from who they don't recognize and look them up and just the little action things that go on. I noticed on your tour you're doing an awful lot of festivals do you like doing festivals and do you like it any more or less than I guess just doing your own show? Well I think that um in the summertime, especially in Europe, that there's a lot more festivals. So I think that's generally where the festivals are in the summer sort of take up the whole time. Um, but as we've played a lot of our own shows and a lot of festivals, we kind of realize that they're two different beasts. Very similar, but they're sort of different things. I think gen generally the, the best part about festivals is being outside, because most of our own shows tend to be inside. It's nicer to see like big open fields, a lot of people having fun. It's a little bit more relaxed, whereas in our own shows, it's you know people that are already sort of converted fans. What's the craziest thing you've ever seen, either while you were playing at a festival or at a festival? We had an interesting experience in Australia where whoever was running the Jumbotron was trying to get women to take their shirts off. And it looked like it was coming from us, which it wasn't. And I think that was pretty crazy because you don't expect it to be like from the festival itself. Is there anything else you want everybody in Baltimore to know or anything you want to say to us. You used to listen to us, you said, yes. uh, Rossum. I listen to HFS almost every day of my life from ages uh, 10 until 17. I w I'm a hardcore HFS listener of, of days of yore. And my first music festival ever was the HF Festival at Jack Kent Cook Stadium. But I wanted to say, we have a couple friends who grew up in and around Baltimore. Congrats on your Super Bowl win, guys. You deserve it.